So I built a web scraper that logs into LinkedIn, searches for jobs in the data science field, and then scrapes this job description data. Everything was going fine until I woke up one morning to check on the status of my bot and found this. So let's go over how I got here and how you can avoid this. What up, data nerds? I'm Luke, a data analyst, and my channel's all about tech and skills for data science. And this video is part of a series where I'm going through and building a data science project in order to build up my portfolio. In my last and also first video of the series, I detail outlining a problem in order to get started with a data science project. And the problem that I'm trying to solve that I feel like many of you can relate to is how to become a data analyst. Specifically, I wanna have more transparency around this, and I'm gonna be looking into things like what are skills required in this field, and also what is the job market like. So once you know the problem that you wanna solve, the next step is actually collecting the data. And collecting the data can actually come from a lot of different sources, so let's break this down. First is around the availability of the data. Is it publicly available, or do we have to sign into some service or go behind a paywall to access it? And the other major aspect is whether it's clean or not. If it's clean, it's usually in the form of CSVs or a database. If it's not so clean, it may be a multitude of data spread over web pages. So I started in the easiest section, looking for clean, publicly available data. So the main sites that I use to look for this kind of data are sites like Kaggle, Google, data.gov, data.world, and even some GitHub locations. Although there was a lot of publicly available data around jobs, there wasn't anything that actually provided the in-depth detail that I needed to solve my problem. So I moved on to the next section of looking at clean data that is not necessarily publicly available. And for this, I think a good example are APIs. So what's an API? In simple terms, it involves using some code such as Python to contact a server and then from there request the data that you want. I consider this not public because typically an API requires you to go through some sort of authentication to approve and allow you to access that data. If you're interested in learning more about using Python to access APIs, I highly recommend you check out the Python for Everybody course as this provides an introduction to this. So anyway, back to the project. I started to look into top websites that provided job data and whether they provided APIs for this. So I decided to look at some of the most popular job searching sites that include LinkedIn, Indeed, Monster, Glassdoor, and even Google Jobs. Out of all these different websites that I looked in, none of them really had an API to allow me to collect job data. Funny enough, LinkedIn used to actually have an API to allow you to access this job data, but has since deprecated it. It turns out for good reason. They didn't want anybody building a LinkedIn competitor. All right, the next section we'll look at quickly is data that is unclean and that is not publicly available. As a data analyst, I find that this is typically where I work in my normal day job in that I have access to data, if you will, unclean data within my company that's not publicly available that I have to actually aggregate and make usable. Unfortunately, I don't work in LinkedIn or even Google, so this wasn't an option for me, so I moved to the last option. And that is data that is not clean, but that is public. I like to think of this as all the publicly available data on the internet that you can access through web scraping or web crawling. So for my project, I felt that the best way to solve this problem was actually collecting job data around job postings. And specifically, I looked at all those websites that I previously mentioned, and I decided to go with LinkedIn. This is the social media platform that most of my subscribers are on when looking for a job. So with LinkedIn, they actually make it really simple. You can go in and search a specific job title in a specific location, and then get job postings around this. So that's what I decided to do for this part of the project is build a web scraper to go in and scrape that data. So over the course of a few days, I worked to build a script for this purpose. Since I'm most familiar with Python and feel it's a superior language, I decided to go with this along with Selenium, a popular Python library. Truth be told, I'm no expert on web scraping. So initially a lot of my time was spent learning the basics of web scraping with DataCamp's course, Web Scraping in Python. This course was great at getting me up to speed fast with the basics of web scraping. And from there, once I got into building the scraper, I switched into using Google to answer my questions. And trust me, I use Google a lot. So for this bot, to make it easier to build, I broke it up into sections of logging into LinkedIn with my login information, 
navigating to the job search page and searching for data analyst jobs, going through and then selecting each job posting in order to scrape the job data I wanted. Once all entries on a page were cycled through, then selecting the next page and repeating this process for all remaining pages. During this, all the data is being saved to a daily CSV file. I wanted only the most recent job postings, so the bot only searched for jobs posted in the last 24 hours. I then used a cron job to run this script automatically every night. So theoretically, I was scraping all the jobs posted for data analysts. Anyway, I do wanna note some caveats about web scraping and some problems that I actually ran into. First, I noticed that I had to throttle the speed that I was actually scraping the data at. If I scraped it too fast, I would get those prompts of an are you a robot checks, and I actually had to physically check this in order to continue. So because of this, it sometimes took as long as half a day just to pull all the data that I wanted. The second other limitation was that LinkedIn only provides around 1,000 job results with a job search. Even if there were hundreds of thousands of job postings, I could only scrape a thousand jobs at a time. And the final most annoying thing was that I had to log on to LinkedIn daily. Otherwise I would continue to get the are you a robot prompt and it would mess up my script. So besides that, everything seemed to be going fine with pulling this data. I even made a video here where I dived into the initial data that I pulled in order to find out what skills were being requested of a data analyst. So I was really optimistic of the data I was pulling and I was really hoping to just continuously pull this data infinitely into the future so that way I would is always having the most up-to-date data on this field. But one morning when I woke up to check on the status of my bot and I noticed that it wasn't pulling data. I initially thought that this was caused by that third problem that I outlined of not logging in daily. So I went and actually tried to log into LinkedIn and when I went to the job postings, I actually physically couldn't search for jobs anymore. So apparently LinkedIn identified that I was a bot and thus restricted my access to no longer be able to access job data anymore. I was a little pissed, but full disclosure, I did use a burner account, so not typically, not my actual LinkedIn login account. I set up a Think account to actually log in um, in case potentially something like this happened. But nonetheless, I was still upset because they had restricted my access to looking for jobs. So I decided to look more into if web scraping is legal. And I found this. In 2019, a US circuit court ruled that web scraping public sites does not violate the law. Interesting enough, this case was actually on LinkedIn being upset that another company, HIQ, was scraping its publicly available data. The court ruled that for publicly available, non-copyrighted data, users are allowed to do web scraping. However, the ruling excludes those sites that require some sort of authentication and that have you sign some sort of terms and conditions that basically forbids you from doing web scraping. This year, LinkedIn actually brought this case up to the Supreme Court and it ended up that the ruling was vacated, meaning the ruling was made legally void. And this case is actually now up for review again. So after learning all this, I decided to look into more of what is LinkedIn's terms and conditions on this. And come to find out, they actually specifically ban their members from scraping any data. Probably should have read that first. So where is this project going now that I hit this road bump? Well, I actually did find that this job data is available without you actually logging in or having to authenticate and agree to those terms and conditions of LinkedIn. I'd have to redesign my bot in order to scrape this publicly available data, if you will. And also I'm not sure if I'm necessarily comfortable doing that just yet, so I'm still thinking about it. As always, if you got value out of this video, smash that like button. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.